So let's talk about Wachula. Oh, my favorite medicine to take, honestly, in terms of the experience that he offers, because I always feel so safe, so held in that beautiful portal of feeling that, you know, Wachuma connects us to our, our heart space. Um, I had the honor and blessing of training and working with my mentor, Howard Lawler, who is no longer here in a body, but um, was, when he was alive, considered one of the most powerful Wachuma uh, shamans, Wachumeros on the planet. Um, and I can testify to the, the validity of that. Um, and so the core of working with Wachuma that he taught me that we're talking about today is the relationship with what's called the Mesa. Mesa is just a Spanish word for table, but in context of working with Wachuma, the Mesa is the altar. Uh, it is um, the, the space from which the practitioner has the connection into the portals with the medicine. Now, every medicine tradition that I'm aware of works with an altar. But with Wachuma, there are specifics that are kind of different, especially in contrast with like ayahuasca. Um, so it's significant as a shamanic practice because first and foremost, the mesa holds the practitioner's objects of power. You know, basically each of the things on the altar represents the, the facilitator's relationship with spirit in different ways, whether they're crystals and the connection to the earth or plants and the connection to plant spirits. Um, like in the center of Howard's um, Mesa was a jaguar skull and his nickname was Ororongo Blanco, which means the white jaguar. Um, and so he had a profound relationship with that animal as do I. So that was like the center of his Mesa because that represented this portal into what the relationship with the jaguar represented. Um, so these are essentially gateways to the connection to spirit. Uh, think of it like an umbilical cord, you know, that we as the facilitators feel like tethered to the magic and the power of these spaces through each of the symbolism and physical connection with these objects. Uh, the Mesa is often uh, very strategically put together in a very different way than with medicines like ayahuasca. What Howard taught me to do is that the left side of the mesa represents the relationship with darkness, the divine feminine, the energy of the moon, you know, all of these kinds of vibrations. And then the right side, of course, is the divine masculine, the energy of the sun, the energy of co-creation, of light. And in the center, it's called the axis mundi, which just means the center of the world. And that is where the most profoundly personal objects of power, I mentioned Howard had his Jaguar skull in the center. So, you know, that's not what all traditions do in terms of how to set it up, but it's certainly how I do it to basically just have this um, balance is actually a core word with Wachuma of energies. And it also place specific objects in uh, each of the four directions to honor and anchor those aspects too, which also represent each of the four elements. Um, so for me, earth and north go together. Fire and east go together. Air and south go together and water and west go together. So there are objects that represent all of that on the altar as well. The Mesa is essentially a tool for us as facilitators to work with the spirits and energies and to co-create, you know, the vibration of the ceremony space. Uh, what Howard used to do is, um, I remember I was in a really big process once in this magical, magical place in Peru, and I was just spiraling into self-loathing. Um, and he brought me to the center of the Mesa, to the Axis Mundi, and he handed me a rattle, which rattles are really, really sacred with the energy of Wachuma. He really responds to them and basically just had me work it out at the altar. And I remember just beating the rattle to start with on my heart, just trying to get back to that place of love um, and just working out the energy because the altar becomes this like living, breathing, very much alive place of, of entry points into this magic. And I don't know how long it took, feels like a really long time, but I moved through the energies and I found this place of self-forgiveness and 
just blossomed back into an open heart, but I had to work with the altar for a period of time in order to find that again. Um, so it's just this, it's like the center of the ceremony, the Mesa is, it's where we keep coming back um, throughout the duration of the experience to reconnect and to let each of the portals be places of teaching that, uh, that Watchuma takes us through. It's also a place of meditation and prayer you know, it's just a place where he can access these places in our hearts and do the teachings, basically. And sometimes my most profound experiences have been at the altar during a Wachuma ceremony. That feels like it's enough to share. You know, I just wanted to emphasize that the Wachuma altar is different. The Mesa is different than most. And, um, and the next time you're lucky to be at a Wachuma ceremony, spend some extra time with the Mesa, um, create a relationship with one or two of those objects. One of the things that I do in my ceremonies is I have the core Mesa that I mentioned, and then I have what I call an interactive Mesa. I have something to the side where all of the objects are available for people to work with. You never ever wanna touch or mess with somebody's Mesa. Uh, without permission. And so I have, you know, my main mesa, no one can touch. That's the sacred space. You can sit and work with the energies, but no touching. But then the interactive mesa will have different things that I completely encourage people to connect with and work with. So, you know, I hope that gives you some more insight into the magic that Wachuma creates. Um, and I thank you so much for listening. Be safe and happy out there. <laughs>